I'm John Philip Santos, an uh, author from San Antonio, Texas. Um, San Antonio is an historic American city, a city that is uniquely rooted both in the epic of New Spain and the American Republic. Um, as such, it is a crossroads of civilizations and has always been so, um, certainly during the period of uh, the colonial Spanish Empire's presence here when the city was founded. Uh, it was a meeting place of Mexicanos, of Spaniards, of the Indian world, of people from all over the world, French, German, Irish. Um, and the city has, uh, in its history, always combined these cultures into something unique and new. Uh, a new kind of mestizo culture has emerged in San Antonio, making it arguably a capital of this new way of thinking about ourselves as the result of uh, mixtures of peoples from all over the world through history. Downtown San Antonio's legacy is uh, an artifact of that history. It's an artifact of this meeting between peoples. Where you are. Hemisphere Plaza, in the very center of downtown, uh, as the site of the 1968 Hemisphere Fair, but in fact it became a, a kind of World's Fair, um, I remember as a child as being a place where not only did I reconnect with some of the deepest sources of the indigenous world out of Mexico, the volador ritual, but it was a place where we encountered the world of the future, technology, multimedia, the emerging powers that computing would bring to change society. So when I think about Hemisphere as an experience, it is a unique mingling of the traditional, the deeply rooted and historic parts of the city, and that part of the city that connects us to the future. Um, through technology, through media, but also thinking about San Antonio's unique role as uh, an embodiment of mestizo identities, uh, the way in which our city has uniquely combined cultures, often without tremendous strife, violence, or hardship. Um, so there's one of the things that I think is maybe promising about a reimagining of the hemisphere site um, is to think about a place where people are invited to join in new kinds of dialogue can encounter each other across cultural boundaries, across linguistic boundaries, using art, using culture, using cuisine, um, a place really that um, could become the nexus of this, this prophetic role that the city has to play in the new Mestizo America that we are becoming. The idea of taking city space that has been abandoned or marginalized or set aside or for whatever reasons left behind and making it some new kind of gathering space is one that I think we can look at in the context of places like the Zócalo in the middle of Mexico City where the discovery of the Templo Mayor late in the 70s really reorganized the social space of the Zócalo and now if you go there today, you'll find people congregating around the excavation of the Templo Mayor rather than the vast open plaza itself. Or a place like New York City, my other hometown, where uh, the abandoned elevated train line uh, was turned into a park, the High Line Park, uh, in the last couple of years, creating an entirely new kind of social space where people are gathering in the middle of Manhattan for eating, for socializing, for concerts. These are places that really um, help to redefine a new kind of nervous system for a city that open up possibilities of meetings between people. So when we think about doing places like uh, Hemisphere over in a new way, it's not just about the structures themselves. It's going to be about the ways in which structures facilitate the meeting and mingling of peoples, uh, how to find ways to use our built environments to maximize social interaction and create possibilities of new understanding. I'm Mariah Watson Pfeiffer. I'm the team's historian and have studied the history of our city for many years. Um, Hemisphere Plaza represents both a wonderful opportunity as well as a challenge to preserve and interpret our city's history. 
uh, while also transitioning into the future. The standing structures that were preserved for Hemisphere are representative of our city's uh, mid to late 19th century development and are a tangible link to the surrounding neighborhoods that were a transitional uh, neighborhood between La Villita, an older area, uh, La Vaca, and uh, the King William neighborhood a bit to the west. Um, the structures, many of which will need to be preserved, are um, uh, certainly adaptable to other uses. They can reinforce the historical elements of the plaza while being put to new uses. Um, there is the opportunity to use the Spanish Asapia, which runs through the site, to interpret that portions of the city's history that goes back to the days when the uh, land was actually the farmlands of Mission San Antonio de Valero, or the Alamo. So there are uh, remnants of earlier history that um, is more related to the Spanish colonial period. And um, then all of this can be tied into the, the green spaces and the modern uses which we hope to develop for our project. Hemisphere, as we all know, um, was themed around confluence. It was a confluence of civilizations. Interestingly, the land that comprises Hemisphere Plaza always represented a confluence of San Antonio. It uh, was initially a land that was formed by Native Americans, uh, four Spanish colonial missionaries and settlers. It was given after secularization to these individuals who continued to farm it until the period of about uh, the 1840s, 1850s, when new waves of settlers came to our city, primarily European settlers, um, additional settlers later from Mexico uh, who, uh, who traveled north to our city um, in the early 20th century. And these people, in various ways settled in the areas of Hemisphere, La Vaca, and La Vieta also. Hemisphere has a blending of lifestyles. You see the upper class lifestyle in some of the larger homes, the smaller, more vernacular houses that were built uh, by the working class settlers who were there. And then what you don't know so much are the various cultures, including the Germans, the Poles, and uh, those European groups who were very much a part of the settlement there. Um, there's a great opportunity to interpret those, either in wayfinding signage, in uh, interpretation on existing structures, and uh, that can be part of the educational component that, that helps to inform those who will be visiting the plaza in its re 